all things yeah, through Christ yeah, that strengthens us. Yeah, you got to right. Yeah, the Bible says yeah, God is yeah, our refuge. Yeah, Somebody so shout glory. He's the God of comfort, huh? the God of your situation, huh? God over your trouble, huh? God over your mess, huh? everything you go through, huh? God understands how not huh? put you through my it. hope, amen, is based huh? on my relationship huh? with a God that I know huh? that saved my soul. Huh? Somebody shout glory. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand praise for that Holy Ghost power. Hallelujah. That quickening spirit. Amen. We thank the Lord today for just allowing us to be in his presence. There's a lot of places we could be, but to be in his presence is priceless. Today we want to uh, turn your attention to the book of Jeremiah chapter 31. We're going to read one verse there, verse 3, which is on the projector screen for you Jeremiah chapter 31 let's read that together verse 3 reads the Lord hath appeared of old unto me saying yea I have loved thee with an everlasting love therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee one more time let's read it together the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And for a subject today, I want to use the thought, a love that won't let go. Amen. A love that won't let go. Most gracious and heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Uh, for waking us up this morning. We thank you for allowing us to see uh, the sun. We thank you for allowing us to breathe your air. We thank you, God, for allowing us to enter into your place of worship on today and allowing us, oh God, to have fellowship one with another. Lord, we ask right now, God, that you move in our midst. Allow us, oh God, to have a spirit of attentiveness to receive the engrafted word of God on today. Feed us, Lord, the manna from on high on today. A word, oh God, that will carry us through this week, oh God. A word, oh God, that will break and destroy yokes, oh God, and set the captives free, Lord. Anoint your vessel at this hour, and I pray, oh God, that the saints are edified and that the sinners are saved in Jesus' name. Let everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. A love that won't let go. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for you that are here today. We do have a few that are out of town, some who informed me and others that didn't. But we thank the Lord for you that are here uh, with a hunger for God, a hunger for God. We, we, we're living in a day and time now uh, where church is almost uh, a leisure activity. It's like going to a ball game. It's, if I wake up and I feel like going, I go. If I don't, I don't. And it's a sad state that some are in. But we're living in a day and age where right now you really can't afford not to go to church. You can't afford not to have, uh, be working on your relationship uh, with God. Because he's going to come like a thief in the night. He's going to come when you least expect it. He's going to come back and snatch us up out of here. And so we got to be ready. And that means we need to be uh, doing his business in the church he left the church here you know you know the church is in man's doing uh jesus told peter he said upon this rock i'm gonna build my church that's what jesus told peter he says in the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so it's his doing is his building is his ministry and we just allow us to be a part of it and so we have to be thankful and grateful for him allowing us to be a part of his church his one church but well, we thank the Lord today for uh, the, the message here that uh, the Lord has dropped in my spirit, a love that won't let go. Uh, from the very first page through the last, the Bible seems to, uh, to demonstrate one uh, relentless passion. And that is that the Father's passion to see those whom he has created uh, to walk in intimacy with him. You can really see that from Genesis to Revelation. There's a common theme throughout the Bible that, that, that God has a passion to see those whom he has created to walk uh, intimacy or an intimate, have an intimate relationship with him. Uh, in Jeremiah chapter 31, the Lord speaks to the people of Israel and he's saying, I have loved you 
with an everlasting love. And I have drawn you, he says, in loving kindness. And so uh, he's shown us love. Anybody in here, do you think you can dispute that? That God, you can't dispute that God hasn't shown you love. You're, you're here today because of the love of God. You're, you, you woke up this morning because of the love of God. You, you, you move. You have the activity of your, your limbs. You, you're able to see and do things because of the love of God of God, not, not of your own self. Nothing you've done enables you to do what you do, but it's all because of the love of God. And this verse is so beautiful, not only because uh, it reveals the depth of God's love toward us, but also because it demonstrates God's passion to draw us into his passion, draw us into his presence. And that's what God desires of us. He, his desire is to draw us into his presence. And the Bible lets us know that in his presence is the fullness of joy. And, and do you not know there are millions in this world that are looking for joy? Seeking for happiness in some way, form, or fashion. Trying to find it that they relent or result. And they go back to drugs. They go to broken relationships. They go uh, to places and travel to different places. Trying to find joy when all they've got to do is look to Jesus. Amen. Because he is joy. And, and so that's what I love about this verse. Even when uh, the hearts of the Israelites had turned from God, the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 65, he says, I revealed myself, he said, to those who did not even ask for me. He says, I, I was found by those who didn't seek me. And he's talking about those that, that weren't looking for him, those that were far off, the Gentiles, those that uh, had not yet received him. And he's saying it was to a nation that didn't didn't call my name yet he said here am I here am I and so he presents himself to those that uh, weren't even looking for him. Amen. Uh, some of you may have that testimony. You may have ran into Christ. Amen. When you weren't looking for him. Some of you uh, found him. Amen. In a way that you hadn't planned. You, you had a Damascus Road experience. You may have been on your way to do one thing, but, but you met Jesus along the way. Amen. And you had an enlightening experience which, which altered your destiny. And so the Lord's unyielding pursuit to draw his people into an intimate loving uh, relationship is as true today as it has ever been before he's still doing this he's still drawing us you see it is and has always been God's desire that you and I walk in the garden of intimacy with him just as he did with Adam and Eve that's what God did the Bible says he came his presence came down and he walked with Adam in the cool of the day met with him there he communed with Adam there he loved on Adam in the garden and I believe God still wants to walk with us today amen in an intimate way in the garden of life he wants to walk with us amen on our jobs walk with us at school walk with us in our homes he wants to walk in our relationships amen in the garden of intimacy and so David the psalmist writes that the love of God is from everlasting to everlasting and in chapter 40 David says your thoughts towards us are too numerous to count too numerous amen how often do you think about something or somebody amen that's what God does he, if you take that and multiply it by infinity God his thoughts towards you amen go on and on they're too they're too numerous to count how much and how often he thinks about you and so you've got to know who you are you've got to know that God hasn't forgotten about you regardless of what you're dealing with regardless of what you're going through God says I haven't forgotten about you my thoughts about you are just so numerous say man you can't even fathom how much I think about you and so we've got to understand church that our, our Christian life is as much about our seeking an encounter with God as God seeking an encounter with us amen it's got to be mutual whenever you're in a relationship you want everything to be mutual you want everything to be give and take amen if you've got one just giving then there's an, an, an imbalance in that relationship because if one's just giving that means the other's just doing all the taking and, and there's an imbalance in that relationship but when you've got one given and one taken and then the other gives and the other takes now you've got stuff going back and forth love going back and forth 
peace going back and forth. And that's what God wants from us. He's tired of a one-way relationship with you. Tired, amen, of waking you up, amen, and blessing you. But yet you treat him like a stepdaddy, amen. He, he's tired of it, amen. He's saying, when will you love me like I love you? When will you get to the place, amen, where you would treat me like I treat you? Amen. Somebody ought to understand this today and tell somebody it's just a love that won't let go. My God. And so, so we got to understand that God anxiously looks forward to every authentic moment that he spends with you. Looks forward to waking you up so he can have some time with you. I can see God standing in the Holy of Holies, amen, while we slumber and sleep at night, amen. And I can see him waking on up, waiting on us to wake up, amen, so that when we get up, he can say, hi, amen, I'm here. Do you feel me? Do you hear me? Amen. I want to commune with you today. I want to, I want to, I want to have relationships with you. I believe he anxiously awaits uh, for his people to arise and bless him. Amen. Think of it each and every moment in heaven. Just think about it. God is there receiving perfect praise. He's receiving perfect worship from the throngs of angelic worshipers. He's there where the seraphim and the cherubims are worshiping him. They're praising God every day, every second, flying around his throne, telling him his worship, giving him his praise and his due. Yet, when the Lord heard the first note come from your lips uh, the Lord without hesitation left that beautiful worship of heaven to receive your praise and to interact with you uh, just to be with you we wasn't even worth it but God says I got a love for you that just won't let go Ah, oh, somebody going to get this picture after a while. And so that is what the scripture is telling us, amen. It means, uh, it means when it says that, that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. That's really what it means. It's, it's when he steps down to, to, to be with you and draw you into his presence. You, you see, it is, it is and has always been God's desire for us to walk in the garden with him in intimacy, just like he did with Adam and Eve. That's what God wants from us, amen. And that's why Paul picked it up in Romans 12 and he said to present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God that's the only way God can get us to commune with him is if we're walking right if we're living right if we're talking right amen then he can come into fellowship with us amen and so we've got to understand church there's some hindrances there's some things we've got to discard in our life some things we've got to get on track we got to quit being tardy and being lazy about kingdom business got to stop amen all this fighting and backbiting amen got to stop fussing folks out amen because God ain't getting in that mess God says I'm leaving you amen when you come back to yourself I might show back up but he's trying to love you when you can't even love yourself my God got to understand uh, uh, so in loving kindness the Lord draws us to himself amen with loving kindness and if we search the Bible church we'll find scriptures where God calls us to himself like in Isaiah where the Lord spoke to Israel saying come let us reason together says the Lord he says though your sins be as scarlet he says I'll make them whiter than snow amen like in Isaiah amen when he tells us he says you know scarlet is a deep color it's a deep red color amen and so he says i'll take that sin of yours and i and i'll make it whiter than snow amen or when jesus said he says come all ye who are weary and burdened he says i'll give you rest he, what is he doing he's calling you unto him calling you unto himself but my question to you today it says how will you respond when he calls you when he says well, come all ye that are weary all ye that are, are burdened and i'll give you rest how will you respond to god god wants us to willingly give him access to our lives. He wants us to give it to him. Amen. That's the problem. We've closed the door. We've shut the windows. We've pulled the blinds down. We've locked the door and we've thrown the keys out. Amen. So God can't get in and have access to our lives. But but you know, I've even met with folks. I've met with spouses. I've met with married folk. Amen. And sometimes, you know, when you're counseling, you're talking, and one of the common problems and factors in relationship is that one always complains that the other fails to communicate with the other. Amen. They won't tell them what they're doing. They won't share with what's going on in their life. They won't share or express their feelings. They withhold thoughts. Amen. And a lot of times it drives the women crazy because the men don't open up and share themselves like they 
should sometimes. And sometimes it's the other way around. But, but we got to understand. And so it's as if they shut them out because they won't share. They, they won't share their inner feelings and thoughts with them. And, and so in the same way, God wants access to our lives. The same way. Amen. God says, you shut me out. You won't talk to me. You shut me out. You won't pray to me. You shut me out. Amen. You always are rebelling against me. You shut me out. Every time the man of God tells you something, you do the opposite. You shut me out. When I'm trying to draw you to me, you're pulling further away. You shut me out. God's sitting here today and he's wanting somebody to know you got to give me access. Give me some access, amen. Uh, unlock the door. Heist up the window, amen. Put the blinds up, amen, and let me in. My God, somebody look at your neighbor and say, give God access. Give him access. That's right. He wants access today. Wants us to interact with him. He wants us to interact with him through our lifestyle, through our, our prayer, through our worship. Wants us to access, uh, give him access to interact through our worship. But we must posture. We've got to learn, church. We've got to posture ourselves uh, uh, to receive the love, amen, and acceptance that, that God so passionately desires to lavish on us. we got to posture ourselves. You know, when I was at my, my uncles used to always tell me, they said, son, they said, nephew, when you walk, Walk with your back straight, amen. Walk with your head up. And they said, don't walk with your head down. And, and look people in the eye when you talk to them. What were they doing? They were trying to teach me how to posture myself as a man. And so that's what we've got to learn with God. Some of us have postured ourselves in a way that we reject God, that we push God out. We've postured ourselves in a way that it's impossible for God to get access to my spirit. We've postured ourselves. We've got to learn to stand up, amen, and posture ourselves with our knees on the floor. We've got to learn to change our pastor and put our hands up and say Lord I surrender I surrender all Hallelujah, we've got to do it, church, uh, because God has a love for you that won't go away. Amen. We've got to posture ourselves. We've got to reposition ourselves. Amen. And so what happens here is that God, he calls us to abide in him, calls us, amen, to dwell with him. But the caveat to this is that he won't force you to do it. He won't force you to reposture yourself. He won't force you uh, to reposition your life. He won't force you to praise him, won't force you, amen, to worship him. He created you with a free will won't force you to be on time for church he won't force you amen to forgive somebody won't force you to keep your mouth shut when you want to say something wrong he won't force you amen because God says you got to pay for everything you did my God, he's able, amen, to keep us if we allow him to. Uh, and so God longs for us to abide in his presence, not just so we can enjoy him, but so he can enjoy us. See, we get the thing flipped all the time. We, of course, we want to enjoy God, but God wants to enjoy you. Our highest calling, church, I believe, uh, one of our highest callings is, is to intimacy with Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't think there's more of a higher calling in this earth that we can have uh, than an intimacy with Jesus Christ. Uh, where I'm loving on him and he's loving on me. Uh, where I'm blessing him uh, and he's blessing me. Uh, where I can share my thoughts with him uh, and he can share his thoughts with me. Uh, oh, it's one of the highest callings, church, uh, is to have this intimacy with Jesus. Uh, both now in this life and in eternity to come but to enter into this church we got to make time for him. we got to make time we got to let him know we love him we got to let him know he's tired of just saying because that's the excuse of the day the church is saying well God knows my heart he knows your heart but he want to see some action he knows your heart but he want to see you put it to work tired of the excuses tired of hearing you say I can't I might I may not tired of everything we put up the wall of excuses it's got to come down uh, your Jericho wall has got to fall down uh, so God can get access into your life. Somebody shout glory. My God, we got to understand, church, you just have to remember that God's acceptance and love for you uh, is not based on what you do. Uh, God's love for you and his acceptance is not based uh, on what you do. Rather, we are received by God uh, on the merits of Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's the good thing about it, because if it was all left up to me, I'd be messed up. Uh, I needed Jesus to intervene for me uh, so that I can have relationship with God. Uh, my God, you see, everything we need to come to God uh, is prepared 
provided through Jesus Christ. Uh, and not only has Jesus given us access to God, uh, but he has given us the Holy Ghost uh, by which we can cry, I'm my father, uh, my daddy, my daddy, I love you. Uh, and that's what he wants to hear from us today. Uh, wants to hear for the rest of your life, my daddy, my daddy, uh, I love you. Uh, and so church, we can experience a healthy, intimate relationship uh, with God without proper understanding of how God views us. Uh, you've got to know a little about yourself uh, and where you stand here in this position uh, in order to know about God's love. Uh, and so the question is this, when God looks at you, uh, what is it that you think he sees? Uh, when God looks at you, uh, what is it does he do think he sees? Uh, he's reading you every day. Uh, he's reading you every second that you take a breath. God uh, is breathing and, and he's looking at you and he's viewing you. Uh, what does God see? What does he think? Uh, the sin you might have committed yesterday uh, or the dirt you might be in now. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, by the baggage you might be carrying today. Uh, uh, the secrets that you may be keeping. Uh, I really don't think that God sees those things. Uh, but he looks at you through Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, hallelujah. The Bible says for there is one God uh, and one mediator between God and man. Uh, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, so when we came unto repentance uh, because of all the sin we had in our life. Uh, all the dirt and the baggage that we had. Uh, when I repented of that stuff. Uh, God says, well, I can see you, huh? but I've got to look at you through Jesus huh? because he shed the blood huh? that enables me to receive you huh? as my son and my daughter. Huh? You ought to thank God today huh? for what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. And I'm almost through here. So God loves your church, loves you so much that he looked beyond your faults. Look beyond everything. Amen. Look beyond your mishaps and look beyond all the trips you had and forgives you when you repent. And that's what he does because it's a love that won't let go. And so we got to understand God appeared of old unto the prophet Jeremiah here saying, yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And so it's this everlasting love that our text speaks of. He says, yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. My God, I love my wife. My God, and she knows I love her. But when we both die, that love's going to be gone. It'll be, uh, it'll be severed by death. But God's love will go on and on throughout eternity. It's from everlasting to everlasting. Not only from old or a good while ago. God says, I love you from all eternity. And with a love that will always last. Folk looking for love, God says, I am love. Folk looking for love, God says, try me, I love you. I won't beat you down. I love you. I won't mistreat you. I love you. But give me a try. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Somebody ought to love them today and give God some praise. I've loved you from all eternity uh, with a love that will always last. Uh, this love is like God himself. Uh, God is sovereign and so is God's love. Uh, God is unchangeable and so is God's love. Uh, God is everlasting and so uh, is God's love. Uh, and I love it because the love here is specific. Uh, he says, I have loved thee. Uh, when you look at that word thee, thee is translated you. Uh, so God is saying, I love you. Uh, this great God, uh, the creator of the ends of the earth uh, the king of kings and the lord of lords uh, the god of infinite purity uh, and holiness uh, does whatever he pleases uh, in heaven uh, and in this earth uh, and it's this god that says i love you uh, my god i have loved you uh, from all eternity uh, i loved you uh, when you didn't love me uh, he says i loved you uh, when you were vile and sinful uh, i loved you uh, when you didn't love your own self. I loved you when you were mistreated and your brother and your sister mistreated you. I still loved you when things weren't going your way. I loved you patiently waiting on you to get it together. I loved you and you have, God says. You have he quickened which were in trespasses and in sin. Loved you so much he died for you. My God, somebody ought to clap their hands and thank God for love that won't let go. 
a love it's a love affair what kind of love affair are you having today is it a love affair with God when you're loving on him and he's loving you back the question is are you having a love affair and so I got to understand here the Bible says for the love of Christ it constraineth us the love of Christ and that word constrains it means to hold together that word constrain there it means to hold fast so when you was about to lose your mind the love of God held you together when you was about to throw the towel in the love of God kept you from giving up when you couldn't find help from nobody love held you together it's that love that won't let go let God's love keep your church let God's love hold you let God's love keep you don't fight it don't hinder it it's a love that won't go away he says I've loved you with an everlasting love it's a love that won't let go and this is what happens when love has got a hold of you love will hold you and when you're trying to get away keep walking slow love says I got you even though you're trying to get away love says I'll hold you when you're about to trip up I've got you doing your mind when it's all messed up I've got you with love go that way I've got you when you're in a bad relationship I've got you when nobody else wants you I love you when won't nobody else love you and when you're about to go the wrong way I'll turn you around I'll put you in a safe place it's a love that won't go away the devil is a liar he's telling somebody that God's gave up on you he hasn't given up he's got a love that won't won't let go somebody say keep me hold me don't let me go it's a love affair God says I love you with an everlasting love I've drawn you with loving kindness I'll keep you in the midnight hour I love you when your enemies hate you I love you when your wife cheated on you I love you when your man has left you I love you I love you I love you with a love that won't let go somebody give God some praise you've got love today don't give up on God you've got love today you got a love that's a good thing brother get up and hug somebody and tell them they got a love that won't let go he loves you he hugging on you he's loving on you it's a love that won't let go hallelujah God says I got you I'm loving on you. He says, with loving kindness, have I drawn thee? Loving on you. And so what he wants from us is to let that love shed abroad in our hearts. And so if God loves me, I've got to love you. If God loves you, you've got to love him. And if he loves you, you've got to love him. And if you love, he loves you. And everybody's got love. Nobody's lacking. Everybody God has got love when the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Ghost. When you've got it, it should show. When you've got love, somebody should feel your love. When you've got love, hatred should be running scared. When you've got love, bitterness should sit down. When you've got love, all oh, everything and envy and jealousy has got to be cut down because you got love. Love loves you unconditionally. Love loves you and it does it easy. Love loves you when everybody else doesn't. It's a love that follows you every day. It's a love that's got your back. It's a love that'll go with you from earth to glory. Love brought you out. Love brought you in. Love's gonna take you out of here. Get on this love train. Let's get ready and go. Love your neighbor as Christ loved you. I'm on the love train. When I hear the sound of the trumpet, I'll be ready with my love ticket. I'll be ready to step on board the glory train. Love is going to lift us up. 
Love is going to carry us out. Love is going to forgive us. Love is long suffering. What are you saying, Pastor? I got a love that won't let go. Somebody shout glory. I got a love that won't let go. You don't need a man or a woman to validate you. You got love. You got the love of Christ. Don't need nothing else but God's love. He says, I got nothing but love for you. And with that love, guess what? It comes correction. With that love, sometimes comes reproof and rebuke. Because who wants to, who wants to serve a God that, that lets us do what we want to do? So sometimes God has to spank us. Sometimes he's got to put us back on the right straight street. But it's still all love. A love that won't let go. I'm through.